What's up? Uh, welcome to uh, Unscripted. I'm here with John Tizovich. What's up? Uh, pastor here at Whitewater. Uh, we're super excited to just be having a conversation. Uh, just sit down and, and talk about uh, some things in life. And uh, hopefully uh, you can continue these conversations in your small groups um, and uh, get some good stuff out of this. I know we're probably going to get some good stuff. So I don't know if you're going to get good stuff. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not from me. <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do our best. We'll see what happens. But um wanted to ask so like to get to know somebody i feel like a fundamental question getting to know somebody is who is your favorite superhero it says a lot about a person yeah that's a great baseline question yeah uh my favorite and this is hard because what you may not know about me is i'm a big comic book nerd uh, i recently moved in uh and uh as as we were moving and a bunch of the guys from the church were helping me uh, unpack the truck and everything I have these long boxes of comics. Yeah. And they're comic boxes. Yeah. But it was like box after box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After box. And they were like, are these your sons? And I'm like, <laughs> no, nah, bro, those are mine. Those are so mine, man. This is hard. This is hard, like, to say just one. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, since uh, his symbol is tattooed on my body. No way. Yeah, that's right. No way. Unwrap that one. All right. <laughs> Churchy people. Um, Batman. Okay. Batman is my favorite. Batman. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, the bat symbol is is on my. You is like, branded. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Do you have like a favorite like uh, vehicle of his? <sighs> Man, the tumbler. Tumbler. When, the, when okay. the tumbler first came onto the scene. Yeah. I, I kind of peed a little bit. <laughs> All right. So. Typical reaction though. Yeah. I mean, I I mean think that that's is normal par for, for the course, right? Yeah. I mean. But either that or when but it's still the tumbler yeah but when the the motorcycle that came out of the tumbler yeah yeah, yeah. in dark night mm. um yeah that moment yeah i screamed we were at the <laughs> premiere in new york when that came no way yeah and no imax way. literally i'm like watching it like this because the only seat <laughs> yeah, that was available yeah. is like the second row uh so aside from jesus who would you say in life uh is your biggest hero yep um i'd say like it's my dad and uh, he's never done anything that is going to like put him into like the history books, but yeah. what he's done is growing up, he sold out to a singular thing that he called the cause, mm. and that was our family. Everything he did um, was about making sure that our family yeah. um, would thrive. And so we didn't have a lot of money. I didn't grow up uh, like in wealth or anything like that. Um, yeah. And so like we struggled at times, but there was always the cause, yeah. the sacrifices that he would make. Um, I mean, at every point in my life and to this day, yeah. he sacrifices for the cause. And so yeah. that, as I get older, as much as I hate to admit it, and as I have now a family, I realize how, um, how important that was yeah. to know, like I will sacrifice everything. Yeah for that family. Yeah. And so that's, yeah, that's, that's been huge. That's good. That's good. I, I think like what you were just describing to me is like someone who, um, we are all called to be somebody that we are all called to be like as a Christian, you're called to be that person who sacrifices for people and, right. and stuff like that. And, and, um, knowing that you're a hero in somebody's life when you, uh, start to follow Jesus calling for your life. So what do you remember the time in your life or the season of life where, um, you, you took that step. You were like, all right, I'm now stepping into what I know Jesus has called me to do what I know. This is, yeah. this is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Um, and did it take some time to get there? You know, what was, what was your story on that? Nah, bro. I knew right away. You followed it. You're Just so done. I made so a decision amazing. for Jesus and I knew my purpose. <laughs> No, not Sounds at all, easy. actually. Sounds easy. Um, <laughs> like, honestly, I'd say this is it. Yeah. You're, you're witnessing it. Yeah. Honestly. Um, like, I've done a lot of stupid stuff in my life. I've done a lot of cool stuff in my life. But, man, um, I am, uh, I hate admitting this, um, I'm in my 40s. Uh, the white in my beard makes it look like I'm in my 50s, and that's <laughs> fine. Um, but... It's taken me to get into my 40s to realize truly what my, my calling and purpose is. Yeah. And when our family decided to take this position here at Whitewater mm. um, and everything that that meant, yeah. it was one of those moments where I really felt like everything in my life was leading up to this moment yeah. to step into this is your purpose yeah. moment. Yeah. And so what I'd say, like, 
is you can't discount the path that you're on, even if it's not the path that doesn't feel the greatest, if yeah. it's good, if it's bad, like yeah. that path, as long as you keep like putting like Jesus, I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. As long as he's in the conversation, yeah. regardless of what path you're on, he's gonna keep using that path to get you to that moment. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and, and, and you and I could have the same purposed moment, but we could come at it from 18 different ways yeah, because sure. of choices we make, yeah. decisions we make, but yeah. it's not, it's never a, oh, I totally blew it or I failed. It's like, yeah. no, as long as Jesus is in it, yeah. he'll use that moment yeah. to push you closer sure. to your moment when you know I am stepping into that purposed moment. Yeah, no, that's good. So, yeah, I think, and on top of that, I think so many like kids and stuff like that and like people my age, we think like if you're calling, if you're called to do something, then it shouldn't be too hard. Right. I think, you know, and, and that's not true. Right. Like, and, and right. like you just said, that's not true. So that was, that was good. And also, what would yeah. you say to like those who um, are younger and they're like in high school right now and they're like trying to figure out the purpose for their life? Because oh, I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. the world puts so much pressure on it, but you said you just now really have started to come yeah. into it. So like so, we shouldn't have. Man, uh, to all of my educator friends out there, I'm so sorry for what I'm about to say next, um, <laughs> is that like stop asking the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. Um, a lot of you are graduating right now in this very weird time of graduation and yeah. it looks totally different. And the question that you and your guidance counselors have been asking is like, oh, what do you want to do? What do you want to do at college? Yeah. Or what are you supposed to do? And it's a horrible question. Mm. It's an absolutely horrible question. Yeah. The question is, what, what was I made for? Yeah. Wow. So what were you made for? Yeah. Another question I would ask is, um, you see the world. How do you want to change it? Well, yeah. You start asking those two questions. Yeah. I see the world. I see all the good, the bad, the indifferent. Yeah. But I see things that need to be changed. Great. How can I change it? Yeah. How can I change that? Or if, if, if you think ahead, let's say you're 17 and, you, and you're thinking ahead of maybe one day you want kids, you want a family. What is the world that you want those kids to live in? Mm, yeah. So what would I have to do to start creating that world? Yeah. E even if it's not even out there yet, even yeah. like even if it doesn't fit into the box of what mom and dad say yeah. or a guidance counselor says, like no, like yeah. what is it that could actually change the world that I want my kids to grow up yeah. in? Or what is the greatest evil or threat to our world right now? Mm, yeah. And I want to tackle that. Yeah. That matched with the question is what what was I made for? Yeah. Man, those are the questions to ask, yeah, not like good. am I supposed to go to college to be a, a doctor, a lawyer or a failure? Yeah. yeah. I mean like how yeah. often is that like I'm either going to be you think, you know, doctor, mm. teacher, lawyer or failure? Yeah. So many kids grow up with this pressure of I have to like s hit this like title of a career yeah. or I've completely failed. Yeah. It's like, no, for sure. You're asking all the wrong questions. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, what would you say to, uh, to just people and, and maybe like your own experience just with doubt and fear when, when <laughs> coming to like walking into what God has called you to do in your life and, and, um, just, just the fear of, I, we even were talking off camera just about, um, fear of just like, like doing ministry and kind of in the wrong way, like reach, like when people, when we say like reaching people, what are fears people yeah. have? Like, how do you, do you have any advice on, on that and reaching people and, and being who God's called you to be? So yeah, man, like I think one, I have lots of fears and anxieties. Yeah. Like big time. Um, you could look at my life story or my work resume yeah and you could see some boxes that were checked like leads a ministry yeah you know senior leader um performed on broadway yeah. um traveled the world you know like and, yeah. and you would see these and you'd be like oh wow like cool yeah. you climbed the ladder bro yeah. he's like listen I am one, not perfect, two, have so many failures, but three, with whether I was 
uh, on the floor scrubbing at a, the Humane Society uh, poop off the floor because that was a job I had to do. Um, <laughs> and, or I was performing on these great stages or leading yeah. a ministry. Like, I have an anxiety that I wrestle with. I've mm -hmm. gone through seasons of depression. I have wrestled with uh, the worries and anxiousness that can be crippling at times. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's never connected to, well, if I become more successful or I'm doing what I'm called to do, that'll go away. Mm. It's like, no, that's, that's actually, that's a lie. Yeah. And it's like, so it's, it's daily, I have to keep that in check. Daily, I have, to, I have to like give that over to Jesus and ask him like, man, help me to grow in this area of my anxiousness, my anxiety, talk to a professional about it. Yeah. I, I got no shame in my game. I've talked to countless therapists and counselors about my anxiety. And so mm. I, I one need to know that because I know so many people sometimes are afraid to share yeah. that they have fears and anxieties and, and, and battling with depression. Yeah. Like it's legit, it's yeah. real. Even if you're a Jesus follower, yeah. it does not matter. Yeah. It, it, it hits everybody. So yeah. be open about it, talk yeah. about it, um, and talk to people to get help. Yeah. To the next question of a fear of reaching people, um, well, I am an introvert by nature. Yeah. Um, I can extrovert. Yeah. But I am an introvert by nature. So sure, meeting yeah. new people was actually very scary to me. I yeah. get social anxiety. Mm. Um, literally, like I, I will, I will literally like feel this heat rising in me. Yeah. If I know I'm gonna go into a room with a bunch of strangers and I'm gonna meet a lot of new people. Yeah. I get really anxious, and so it's hard, or can be hard for me to to push through that just to meet people. Yeah. And then if the idea is I want to actually share my faith. Mm, yeah. I was like, how do I, how yeah. do I overcome that mountain that's now in front of me? Yeah. And what I've learned along the way, and it's not like this isn't the only way to do it, or this is, this is the purest way to do it. What I've learned that if I want to share my faith, I have to earn the right to be heard. Yeah. I have to, and that has been the antidote to the fear mm. because if I just take time, to one, be myself, yeah. not not some other version of me, but the true yeah. authentic self so that you see who I am. Mm. And then if I spend enough time with you to build a relationship where it's not awkward that we talk, where it's natural that yeah. we talk. Yeah. And if, if, if I live my way in my life, like according to, to Jesus's uh, leading in my life, then you'll start to naturally ask questions of, yeah. Why did you do that? Or why didn't you do that? Yeah. You, naturally, what should happen is you will start asking questions about the life that I, that I live. Yeah. And I then naturally, because you know you can trust me and we've built that relationship, yeah. I then can share, well, it's because of Jesus in my life. Mm. This yeah. is how he changed me. Yeah. And, and, and not in a, in a weird beat you over the head with a Bible way. Like, yeah. This is how he wrecked my heart. Mm. And this is why I make these decisions. Yeah. And this is why I don't make these decisions. For but sure. it's it's yeah. earning that right to be heard first that when when you know you've got somebody that you can talk to, mm. like when the proverbial crap hits the fan, like are you the person they're gonna call? Yeah. Or are you the person they're gonna hide from because yeah. because of your religion yeah for sure. they think you're gonna judge them yeah no that's good i think um that's super important to know is like when we're trying to reach people like to that was so good because like you just gotta like be yourself and love them uh and not not make it i feel like so often especially you know, I've, I've heard it myself and i've seen it where uh what's what's the what's the what's the other thing you're trying to get at you know right. is what they're always like looking at they're like okay right. so you're ch but you want me to go to church you have a bait you want and switch yeah exactly right. and right. i think what's when your you're agenda just, yeah exactly yeah. and when you're just super true and honest to yourself uh first you are them you're that to those yep. people and that's good well they see that people are smart man yeah they can see whether you're authentic or not yeah they get that when they look at you in the eyes and they're like man that person actually does care yeah I mean, that speaks volumes. Oh, for sure, yeah. What would be uh, some last thoughts? Just uh, anything, any uh, advice you have? I, I heard once that um, 
from a pastor. It was, uh, he was talking, he's like, so many people, I think that is one of the biggest questions asked uh, to a pastor is uh, what, what's my calling in life? What is, what is my purpose? What is that? And uh, so many people want like a roadmap, right? Where it's like, check this off. Like I got to right. stop at this part. Right. And yep. uh, I heard that, you know, it's not really a roadmap. You, Jesus doesn't really have a roadmap for your life. It's your purpose is to just follow Jesus right. and, and let him just right. guide you where you go. Right. Um, I didn't know if you had any thoughts, final thoughts on, yeah. on that. And so I'll say two things. One, um, kind of what we talked about earlier yeah. about, are you asking the right question? Mm -hmm. um, what are you passionate about? Yeah. Um, when someone can figure out what I'm passionate about, and those are things that naturally will just come out. Yeah. Like, like by you can look at how much time do I spend doing this thing? For sure, yeah. Um, what do I get excited about? Yeah. When you can see where passion collides with gifting and ability, mm. very close to that intersection is going to be calling. Yeah. All right, but, but don't think of it as What's my calling? I know I have these passions over here and these giftings over here, yeah, but what's yeah. my calling? It's like, no, it, the collision of passion and gifting is normally calling. Mm. And so it's like, what am I passionate about? Yeah. And it's okay if, if your passion doesn't look like the other person next to you's passion. Mm. Like it's yours. God put that there. Yeah. Like he has, he has put a divine spark yeah. inside of each of us that is, yeah. that this is my thing yeah. that he wants to use to, to advance his kingdom yeah. in my world. Yeah. It, and it's gonna be yeah. different, yours is yeah. gonna be different than mine, but it's it's gonna look like this because it's in me. Yeah. And so that's that's your passions, yeah. that's your gifting. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. So lean into that yeah. and, and your calling will emerge from yeah, that. Yeah, for sure. Um, the other thing I would say is, um, I, I say it a lot and, it, and it's almost being like a running joke now and I've only been here for a short time, but it's like, just be good to yourself. Yeah. Like just be good to yourself. Mm. And that is like for, for people of every single age. Yeah. Like we're in a culture where we, we will tear each other down and we will tear ourselves down. Yeah. And we're the only, we're the only us we got. Yeah. You know, so be good to yourself. Wow. Like stop acting like the understudy of, of the movie yeah. where you have been placed as the lead the role. role. Yeah, that's good. You know, there isn't an understudy for you. For sure. So if that's the case, stop acting like an understudy. Yeah. And two, be good to yourself. You know, like, like truly, like, please be kind to yourself. Like, you matter. You're not alone. You, you, you're, you're more than enough. Yeah. Like, if, if, if we all could just grasp that. Yeah to be good to ourselves. Like there'd be more love, there'd be more kindness, there'd, yeah. be, there'd be a community that that the world would, would would just be like, I have to be a part of that. Yeah. I, how did that community get transformed? Yeah. Well, it's because of people, they were good to themselves. Yeah. And by nature, because of that, the outpouring of that is I'm gonna be good to you because I'm in a good place. Yeah, yeah. You can't give away when what you don't yeah. have, yeah, you know? Yeah, for sure. So yeah. it starts with like, Jesus, help me be good to myself. Yeah, yeah. So, that's that's so take good. care of yourselves. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, good stuff. I appreciate you coming and uh, sharing sharing some thoughts and wisdom with us. Ah, easy. <laughs> we appreciate you. Uh, Thanks, yeah. Man. Thanks for watching. Uh, we will see you guys next time on Unscripted. Uh, make sure to share, like this video. Uh, whatever else. So, that's it, man. yeah, appreciate it. All right. Yeah.